Hey guys, today I'll be giving you some useful information you'll need to know to understand some of the differences between S-Log2 and S-Log3 so you'll be able to choose the correct profile for any particular situation. Before I get into the comparison I just want to give some of the basics behind the S-Log profiles. S-Log2 and S-Log3 were created for high-end cinema cameras enabling them to record a high dynamic range without needing to record RAW which would take up a lot of storage capacity. The first profile to be created was S-Log2 which has a capacity of 14 stops of dynamic range. At the time this was an appropriate size for the sensors that were available to the Sony high-end cinema cameras. Then later on S-Log3 was created with a capacity of 16 stops of dynamic range which was to future-proof their Sony cameras so that they wouldn't have to create another log profile until they exceed the 16 stops. Also the S-Log3 curve matches the standard Cineon curve which a lot of people who are familiar with other cameras that are not Sony would know how to grade easily without having to learn how to grade a particular log curve. So that's a very brief summary of S-Log2 and S-Log3. Let's get into the comparison. So first we'll think about dynamic range. S-Log2 records 14 stops and S-Log3 records 16 stops. Most of the Sony mirrorless cameras will record 14 or less stops of dynamic range in video. So when you're using a mirrorless camera, at least two stops of empty space is recorded, which is why the Sony S-Log3 Zebra's clip at 100 compared to 107 for S-Log2. This means that for S-Log3 on average, each stop of dynamic range contains less information compared to S-Log2. By comparing the shape of the curves, we can understand how the log profiles store data. Here is a plot of the S-Log2 and S-Log3 curves. The three main regions are the shadows, midtones, and highlights. We can think of the area under the curve as a measure of the amount of data recorded in that region. So based on this plot, S-Log3 records more information in the shadows and midtones, and S-Log2 records more information in the highlights. Now for color grading S-Log footage, generally it's easier to color grade S-Log3 but it depends on which method you're using. If you're using S-Log2 or S-Log3 specific LUTs or the ACES workflow, both profiles will have an equal difficulty in grading. But if you're manually grading, S-Log3 will be easier to grade. This is due to the shape of the log curve, which can easily be normalized or graded simply by adjusting the shadows, midtones and highlights. But adjusting the shadows and midtones of the S-Log2 curve will result in crushed shadows and requires more complex methods for manually grading. Based on the fact that Sony mirrorless cameras record in 8 bits and all have 14 or less stops of dynamic range, I'd recommend using S-Log2. This way you'll be maximizing the usable data recorded. If you need to push your color grade further, the difference will become more noticeable. I hope this video was useful in helping you understand more about S-Log2 and S-Log3, giving you something you can think about before choosing your log profile. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.